Hello and welcome to Macro by Kexalius. Some in the media compares the implosion of FTX to the collapse of Lehman Brothers, but there is a better analogy. FTX embodies all major financial scandals since the new millennium. FTX is Lehman Brothers, but it is also MF Global, it is Enron, and it is Theranos. Therefore, it is not surprising to see losses spreading beyond crypto, for BlackRock, Sequoia, and major asset managers have lost billions investing in a company that does not have a functional accounting department. This transmits losses to ordinary investors across the globe. And in a way, FTX is the end of the beginning, for its financiers have survived to fight another day. And they will seek out another messiah figure who followed the footsteps of Sam Bankman Freed. As recently as October, the halo around Sam Bankman Freed was so overwhelming that BlackRock, Sequoia, Temasek, SoftBank, Tiger Global, and other institutional investors did not raise red flags on FTX. After its implosion, the new liquidation overseer announced the firm did not have an accounting department nor a complete roster of employees. Enron cooked its books, but FTX did not even have a complete book to cook. The overseer added that the firm did not maintain an accurate list of bank accounts, so much for due diligence. The institutional investor's curious blindness was also evident with Theranos. When Elizabeth Holmes leveraged former Secretary of State George Shultz's credential to win over Marine General James Mattis and former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger, they became Theranos' board members and elevated its brand. Their presence was enough to convince additional investors, such as Fortress Investment Group, to pour money into Theranos. Given Tiger Global used Spain to conduct due diligence on FTX, it implied entrenched groupthink among institutions. While firms advocate for diversity, few are committed to intellectual diversity. In FTX and Theranos, the investors saw what they expected to see, a wunderkind featured by the World Economic Forum who is destined to become the next Warren Buffett. When they saw FTX, their mind automatically reconstructed a mirage in the form of Berkshire Hathaway. A common issue with institutional research is consensus following. An analyst earning half million dollars per year publishing market outlook will often face four outcomes with asymmetric risk rewards. In scenario one, the analyst will follow consensus and gets the market right. The outcome, the analyst will receive usual praises. In scenario two, the analyst will buck consensus and gets the market right. The outcome, the analyst will get an extra pat on the back, nothing more. In scenario three, the analyst will follow consensus and gets the market wrong. No big deal. The analyst will be told everyone makes mistakes. In scenario 4, the analyst will bug consensus and guess the market wrong. Then there will be more severe consequences to threaten one's steady earnings. Few will take the risk to criticize an industry champion supported by prestigious institutional investors and powerful political patrons. When you strike at a king, you must kill him. Similar asymmetric risk rewards also applies to hiring. A candidate who owes $200,000 from going to an elite school will have different incentives versus one without student loans. The present system would at times punish firms that recruit candidates from public universities. In the event of mistake, the firm may face greater scrutiny if the candidate came from a humble background. This would shrink the candidate pool to save hires who were less likely to rock the boat. Yet, sometimes it would take a rebel to challenge views by BlackRock, Temasek, 
or the firm's senior partner. One large asset manager I respect has a number of successful senior investment professionals who graduated from public universities. They taught me the value of dissent. If everyone in the group arrived at the same conclusion, then one person would have an obligation to play the devil's advocate. I relished in the role, for I didn't have a lot to lose given my humble background. Yet, investors behind Theranos and FTX appear to have conformed to the bullish consensus without question. Like Lehman, the source of FTX's problem was leverage. Lehman's mortgage-backed securities acted as collateral for loans. As the mortgage crisis unfolded, Lehman's MBS collateral depreciated rapidly and triggered a liquidity shortfall. FTX used its own token, the FTT, as well as FTX-affiliated SAM coins to back its loans. Before impairment, this crypto asset valued as much as $6.7 billion. They plummeted after markets learned of the firm's financial health. In the end, FTX only had $900 million liquid asset versus $9 billion in liabilities. In Lehman's case, Bank of America was unwilling to touch the firm's toxic assets without official backing, and Binance abandoned its offer to acquire FTX after describing latter's book as a confusing mess. Finally, both FTX and Lehman imploded following the Fed's monetary policy tightening. Liquidity drain and heightened volatility made it difficult to hide losses even if investors failed at rudimentary due diligence. In the MF Global scandal, the firm used a legal process known as rehypothecation to reuse client collaterals for its own trades. The firm had accumulated 6.3 billion of exposures in Italian, Portuguese, Irish, and Spanish bonds just as the European sovereign bond crisis worsened. As losses mount, MF Global lost its clients' collaterals after its own trades blew up. As clients rushed to pull money out, MF Global became insolvent. FTX and Alameda shared a strong financial connection. When Alameda's portfolio faced large losses during heightened volatility since the start of 2022, FTX lent customer deposits to its sister company to recapitalize its trading account. As the implosion accelerated, value of both FTX and Alameda's collateral became worthless, and both firms became insolvent after redeploying client assets without permission. The collapse of FTX combined the worst elements of Lehman Brothers, MF Global, Enron, and Theranos. Thanks to a perfect storm of global monetary policy tightening, high volatility exposed wrongdoing and punished the imprudent. Had the Fed been easing and releasing liquidity into the financial market, FTX and Alameda would have remained as icons of innovation and philanthropy, and their investors would be held as champions for investing in a company that does not maintain a full list of its bank accounts. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you at the next episode. Thanks to our wonderful institutional clients and supporters like you for making this video possible. Please visit our Patreon for daily market updates and live Q&As.